away from this, before I rushed away, I was going to talk about and use um, the Guardian's review of Burt Kreischer's movie as a sounding off board to talk about the lack of objectivity when it comes to commentators and pundits and consumers and fans alike of people in the comedy scene. I'm seeing nowadays, I'm not liking it. Because we can all agree that Burt Crash is annoying, Burt Crash is an alcoholic, Burt Crash is a drunk, Burt Crash is cringe, Burt Crash is kind of pathetic. The whole adult frat boy thing, granddad frat boy thing is getting to is really dumb and annoying. The taking off his shirt thing is kind of hack. The jokes are terrible. And in general, he just is a little bit hard to kind of look at for a you know prolonged period of time. We can all agree to that, right? But I don't like this thing that everyone's doing because they're not a fan of him as a person. They can't detach not liking him as a person and also being objective and saying, hey, I can understand why some people might like the movie that he made, The Machine, based on his true or not so true life story of him going to Russia um, one time during college. Right. People can't detach the fact that they don't like him from the idea that maybe the movie might be decent. And that maybe the box office, whatever, revenue that it generated may not be indicative of whether it's good or not. Like it might just be a good comedic movie, but because of the weekend it came out, limited release. Like I said already, I'm based in London and there was only one screening. Uh, no, was, it, was, it, was only able to, it was only available to screen, sorry, for one day. And I think that was like last week, Thursday or something. So it was on a specific day only. And it's not screening any other times. I already checked in, in my, you know, late early on today. There was no other screening showing. So clearly there's limited release, not much promo apart from the podcast kind of circuit, which isn't the general consumer. So you're never going to make crazy bucks if it's, not pop, if it's not pushed to the general consumer, which it wasn't. And, you know, whatever it may be, him being a niche star, blah, 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 all these things involved. I still think, you know, spending 20 million on a movie like this doesn't, it seems a bit over, you know, what I would imagine a movie like that to be costing. I think maybe most movies are probably cost too much to make, which kind of hurts their ability to try and make any money. But I still wouldn't, it wouldn't be unbelievable to me, somebody that I respect their opinion came to me and said, hey, you know, Agostino, the movie is actually quite decent. And I would be willing to accept it and ex I'd be willing to hear that and accept it to be true. But for some reason, the fans out there are using sites like The Guardian as a stick to beat him over the head with. It's like, come on, are you really going to trust The Guardian's opinion on comedy? Any mainstream kind of outlet really view on comedy and, you know, and nuance and jokes and shit or whatever and humor. Are you really going to use their kind of, uh, as their metric as any kind of sign that the movie's good or not? especially someone like a Burt Kreischer, like it doesn't really make any sense to be fair. Um, so I think this two star rating from the Guardian is a bit unfair personally for me because if you give someone two, you might as well give them one star personally. I think it's probably around the three, three stars if you're going to be generous to it. And I'd imagine if you went to see it, judging by the people on the Burt Kreischer sub, there's plenty of them on there who really did enjoy the movie. They went there you know, and believe the hype, they believe the fucking sell from, you know, Bert in terms of going there and having a drink, having a good time and really enjoying yourself. And they had a really good time. And I'm not surprised that that is a fact, that is a situation. But for some reason, people are out here making it seem as if like, if you had a good time enjoying Bert Crash's movie, that you're some sort of weirdo or something. I don't really understand that. So let me just see what he says here. It's a clip taken from his premiere, where he said, this is how to do a premiere. Let's actually just refresh this, so it just loads up correctly. This is a video taken from his premiere itself. And I don't know, it looked kind of fun. Would I personally go to it myself? Obviously not. But I can understand if you would like this to be your, you know, evening's entertainment. I can understand it. Especially when you consider all the nonsense movies out there now in the cinemas. Loads of stupid political messages. Loads of um, culture war nonsense dripped in there somebody just making an unapologetically funny movie without any kind of nonsense involved in it i can't understand why it can be successful and of course a, a big part of it is that you have to kind of like the main character in the movie burt crasher and if you're not a fan of him as a person it's going to be hard to kind of get over that but i still think people are little are lacking some level of objectivity in this this is burt crasher walking to his movie premiere taken from his twitter account it looks like the only thing that's for certain when it comes to burt and i think most content creators are like this I think outside of maybe the stuff that I do, where I just sit in front of a webcam and talk shit. But I think if you actually create content when you're out in the real world, 
there's a part of me that thinks it must be exhausting to be your friend or to be a member of your family because every day is like content. Like he had to like tell somebody to like turn the camera on, get in front of them, have the two women behind him walk behind him in that way as he's walking. Like, you know what I mean? Like somebody's constantly fucking, you know, executive producing, directing your fucking life as you're going about shit. You're out for dinner, you're out for drinks. Oh, hold on one second. Let me just record this. It's like fucking hell. It must be exhausting to be knowing somebody as a content creator, dating somebody as an entertainer, in involved in the entertainment industry, act in any way, shape or form. It must be fucking exhausting. The people associated with them, the family and friends, actually don't get enough props because they allow the the freak, like himself and myself, the people that are fucking obsessed with the sound of their own voice and shit, they allow them the ability to kind of do what they do. But Jesus Christ, day to day must be exhausting. Anyway, play the clip. This is how you roll a report. Premier, shirtless, with your posse behind us. The machine can't wait for everybody to see this movie. Yeah. Welcome to the motherfucking machine premiere. There's a really considerable lack of people here, like in terms of the regulars. Where's Brendan Shaw? Where's Brian Callen? A big machine la premiere burt kreischer an integral member of the fucking jre extended universe where is brendan shaw where's brian callen somebody please tell me yo big up richie richie big up the chat big up everybody in there jesse l uche urban mind emmanuel de santos tyler durden big up everybody jumping in there on oh, and, and mkrcovoj big up everybody in there let's play <laughs> only movie that has a red carpet with axe throwing i can promise you that boom let's go that gets two chicks in 20 years and this, this is one of them Anyway, it keeps, it keeps pausing a lot because Twitter video fucking fucks up on my laptop. But as you can see, it looked like a fun time. Everyone had, had a blast. The, obviously, the premiere, he put a lot of work into it. Mini golf, fucking axe throwing, people punching shit, um, shots on the red carpet, wife there, family there. Clearly a fucking blast of a time. And I'm not mad at it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not mad at it. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing the movie myself. I am also wouldn't be surprised if it's fucking dog shit. And I'm also be surprised if it's fucking funny. But one thing I'm not going to do is try and use The Guardian's review of this movie as justification of it being terrible. I'm sorry. Like, not happening. Um, but I also appreciate some people just aren't going to vibe with it because they're just not fans of Burt Kreischer. No matter what, you know, his movie is about, they're just not going to give him any kind of props in that regard. Um, I was one of the people that said, that it's going to be a success, right? And that it's going to do really well and it's going to result in him getting a second movie and shit. But based on what I've been seeing on the Burt Crasher sub about the fucking sales and about the, sorry, about the box office opening weekend, it's not looking likely. It's looking like not a lot of people actually came out to watch the movie, um, unfortunately. So most likely because Hollywood is a numbers game, they're probably not going to give him a second movie, which is, you know, not the greatest thing because you'd imagine something like that you know it being a success would probably green light and open doors for other podcasters community comedy type people to you know have ability to go out there and make movies so this might be an issue going forward with it it might be a bit of an issue it might be a bit of an issue but i've read so far that the box office isn't the greatest so far it's not doing the greatest um and it costs like 20 million to make in it yeah according to this post here this is courtesy of what the Burt Crasher sub, right, right now. And they've posted this now, taken from Box Office Mojo. And it says here, the machine has made domestically. Um, oh, okay. I guess it's worldwide too. It's not included. Everything included. $8 million. $8.8 $8 million, uh, $8 .8 million. And it costs six twenty million to make. So, you know, it's obviously not broken even. So that's a bit of an issue. I think running time also is a bit of an issue. I haven't watched the movie yet, but I think a comedic movie like this shouldn't shouldn't be any longer than 130 minutes. Sorry, what one hour 30 minutes? At best, maybe one hour 10, 20.
but it shouldn't be one hour 50 like that's like basically a two hour movie that that shouldn't happen especially with trailers that's definitely a two hour movie that's too much so maybe it's too long it could get cut down a little bit but you know it's one of those things those first movie vibes but you know what just out of interest let's actually read the guardian review of the movie what do they say here the machine review stand-up comedian makes for limp movie star <laughs> <laughs> they're calling him limp the funny thing is i'd imagine if you're an alcoholic most likely a, a consequence of being an alcoholic probably similar to that doing loads of drugs is that you can't really get it up a lot so this has got a double entendre right the fact that you can't get a boner when you drink too much booze and then the fact that they're calling him a limp movie star is hilarious um mk crv says was hoping the machine would get the next movie greenly <laughs> fuck you <laughs> fuck you <laughs> Well, my movie would be about my movie would be a trailer of just me in my fucking in my loafers skidding all over the granite floor as I'm going. Hats, 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 hats. Fuck you, man! Come here! I'll fuck you up, man! As I'm trying to, as I'm swinging for the air, fighting some some person off camera who maybe does exist or doesn't exist. Just you know, a fucking close up of my loafers slipping and sliding all over the floor. <laughs> anyway, it's continuing. The machine, uh, the, the, the movie star, what well, they, they, they gave it two two out of five stars from the Guardian. So it says here, if you're gonna put a stand-up comedian into a big cinematic, sorry, a big climatic fight scene, it better be really funny. That's just one of the many rules you may not realize were in place before watching the machine. <laughs> Fucking hell, they're going from already a future limp extension of a stand-up comedian, Burt Crouch's most famous routine. Sorry. It's a story about how a former Florida State University frat boy and prolific partier took college to took college trip to Barcelona. Oy. Big up Richie. As you took a poll asked everyone <laughs> will this movie be good or bum? We all said bum and look at the results. But you stood your ground and going down with the ship in the Balenciaga flats. Ah fuck you! Oh, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Where do you guys remember the things I say? <laughs> Why? Why? Why do you remember the things I say? <laughs> Fuck. Okay, yeah. Richie's right. Richie is fucking right, okay? Richie is fucking right. Um, I'm not lying. Right now, I'm feeling like this right now. Um, <laughs> Right now, I'm feeling like this when I, when I see Richie reminding me of the things I may have said, this is how I feel. Oh my God, man, where is it? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is how I feel. When I see, uh... oh, it doesn't fucking matter, does it? Doesn't fucking, where is it? Uh... No, is it? Uh... Yeah, there you go. It's fucking took too long to fucking pull up and the, the moment has definitely fucking passed, but you know what? We're gonna keep going anyway. So whenever I see fucking Richie remind me of something that I may have said in the past and my many contradictions, the first thing that comes to mind is this. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind when you remind me of my contradictions, right? The Arthur clenched fist, right? Just shaking, shaking with fucking rage. Actually, it should be shaking, but for some reason it isn't. The gift isn't fucking playing. But this is how I fucking feel when I get reminded <laughs> of my contradictions, my inconsistencies, and my horrible hot takes. Because one thing you're going to get on the ra on the random show for sure, maybe not on the Agatina Zinger show because I'm reporting on culture and fashion and shit, but on the random show, one thing you know you're going to get for sure from me on here are incredibly bad hot takes. <laughs> incredibly terrible hot takes you're always gonna get them from me on this side of the internet honestly you want crazy shit hot takes i'm gonna give it to you right here right here okay anyway back to the fucking review from the guardian so um it says here um da -da -da -da. Put it, so, sorry, it's, sorry it's, it continues. Uh, the, um, the story is about how a former Florida State University frat boy and prolific party took college trip to Russia where he bumbled into a confidence of the Russian mob and wound up helping some gangsters rob a train. It sounds enough like a set piece from an early 2000s studio comedy that impulse to make a long form version makes sense, at least on paper. Hmm. 
Here, Jimmy Tatro plays a college-age Kreischer in flashbacks, but he doesn't enter the movie until ways in because the machine makes a strange structural choice that starts with Kreischer playing a version of himself, already famous comedian, dealing with the aftermath of a viral hit routine. His fame has exasperated his proclivities toward hard partying, the glorification of which has taken a toll on his family life. Even as it stands, even as it sends his podcast in shooting up the stars, Crash's success also brings him to attention of the Russian mobsters who Crash's precious family heirloom watch was stolen during Crash's robbery. The mobsters sent his icy daughter, Irina, um, Eva Babic, to retrieve Kaisha and improperly bring him back to Russia so he can lo locate the watch. Eventually, those flashbacks kick in, supplying the, the particulars of Crash's original jaunt and brief accidental life of crime. Am I the only person that thinks that makes sense? So the Guardian thinks it would have made more sense if the movie started with like the young Burt Kreischer and what led up to the machine story or just basically telling the machine story. It, they, they wanted to start in chronological order. So it starts from young Kreischer and then goes into like, like current day Kreischer. I think it makes more sense starting it with like current day because the movie is about him and we recognize him. So it starts off with like the guy that you recognize from the podcast and shit talking about, you know, living his life. And then it kind of then goes, oh, this reminds me of the time when I was young and gets into a flashback. No? So already I don't trust the Guardian's review because structurally they would have made a shit movie. It's a, if the movie's already shit now, it would have been worse if it started off with like young Kreischer, with an actor that doesn't look anything like Burt Kreischer, personally. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think this guy, what's his name? Jimmy Tatro. Jimmy Tatro. I don't think he looks that much like Bert at all, personally. Not even like Bert when he was young and f and not fat. They don't look that similar. He's way more handsome, number one, and they just don't look that similar at all. So you would have started this movie with him in the beginning, playing Bert, and it just wouldn't have looked correct. I don't think so, personally. But again, what do I know? Continue. Um, I've never made a movie. What do I know? The decision to put the present day crash of front and center drops viewers into Bert's unpleasant home life, full of friction with his teenage daughter, um, Georgia, played by Jessica Gabor, and worsened by a visit for his Nedling father, Albert Mark Hamill who winds up accompanying him on his return to Russia. With his early US scenes, the movie asks for an extraordinary amount of buy-in for anyone unfamiliar with the Crasher story, which is treated alternatively like a globe-rattling, unavoidable pop hit and a matter of intense curiosity for anyone unfamiliar with it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I get what they mean here. They basically got annoyed that the movie starts off with the presumption that you must know who Burt Crasher is. I get that. I, so they they got annoyed at that assumption, that incense, that kind of assumption that everybody must know Burt Kreischer. He's been on the Joe Rogan experience. He's a famous comedian. He does Two Bears, One Cave. He's got the Burt cast. And that assumption that these guys are way more... That's the thing that's probably the issue here in hand anyway. These guys are probably very famous in their own niche, but outside of that niche, they're not that famous, if that makes sense. But also, I don't think a lot of people even know the names. I'm sure they've probably seen a clip of Burt and maybe seen a clip of him on Rogan, a clip of him laughing at something virally on the podcast, a clip of him doing crowd work or a bit on the special. But they probably can't even put a, 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 name, a, a name to the face. They just know the face. So I get this. So I get if you're coming into it blind, it could be a little bit annoying. Yeah, nobody know who you are. Exactly. Um, it continues. The double hubris um, illustrate the blind, sorry, the bind the filmmakers find themselves in. Do they retell the story straight and risk boring Crash's fans? Or do they attempt to elaborate on the story and risk alienating anyone without a pre-existing interest in what Burt Crash's trick, in what makes Burt Crash's a tick? <laughs> um, the machine does both but ultimately favours the latter, which involves a fair amount of comedian navel-gazing. Easy enough to do, one of Crash's trademark is his shirtlessness. He is essentially retelling his signature story without the built-in jokes of his own narrative and reflecting on it years later. In the process, Crasher creates perhaps the first ever legacy sequel to a stand-up special and certainly first one to follow up just seven years after its release. I get it. I get what he means. I get what he means. I get, I get what they mean in their review, to be fair. I get what they mean with their review. 
Um, if you're coming in it as a straight up non you know familiar with this scene of guys and whatnot i understand that those reservations to be fair but i still think this doesn't talk about if the movie is funny or not it's just talk still a lot of like structural opinions about the movie is the movie funny because the you know it's a comedic movie that's the whole point why it exists yeah big up gabriel i'm glad you guys have joined uh big up marty moose you know we just live for the sake of being live man you know no reason we're just here for the sake of it and also we don't have any friends uh, we continue here um, this ambitious undertaking might make more sense if the movie rooted itself more familiarly in a specific period it's minor detail in the grand scheme of things but this film's time passage math is scattershot at one point Kreischer talks about these events happening around 20 years ago which doesn't match up with the movie given age given with the movie given age of 48 based on that figure the story should be taking place in 1993 but Crash's pop culture references and the movie's impressively high quality needle drops come from notably later in the decade, which is still more 20 years ago. While his wardrobe showcases t-shirts out of the mid-1980s, maybe this is all reconciled to the original routine. Yeah, but that's the whole point though. This these little uh these little like things this person's recognizing are holes in the story that actual fans were saying that was kind of leading to the fact that a lot of people didn't believe the story in the first place until i think one of burt crashes i think classmates yeah i think if i remember the, the law correctly one of built one of burt crashes like classmates in college came on his podcast and basically corroborated the story or maybe commented something on facebook and she said yeah this actually happened like i remember that being a thing because a lot of people didn't believe him but a lot of the kind of missing of the stories is probably him from memory he's a fucking alcoholic there's no way he's gonna remember everything so cool and then he's kind of filling the holes and make it funny and punch up a bit but a lot of that is based on it, it being a long time ago and it and there's parts of it also that aren't true and completely made up that probably adds to the whole affair but anyway let's quickly let me quickly uh pause the mic because i um blow my nose bear me one second Okay, we're back. So, it continues. A few stray jokes land. Albert has a funny line, um, deeply dad-like on his um, self-seriousness about how he took a vow of non-violence after reading a Nelson Mandela biography. And there's a couple of gross um, gore gags. But among all the Russians, only Irina registers as a comic character and only just barely. Of course, the Guardian would say, only the woman's the best one in the movie. Of course, they would say that. If there was a if if Bert had a black friend, they'd probably say the black friend was the funniest bit in it. Oh, Agostino was the best comic comedic relief. His hair, the way he moves around, his mannerisms, the stories. Like, of course they would say that. That isn't really a good indication of the movie, to be fair. It continues. The film's director, Peter Atenko, cut his teeth on the Kill and Pill sketch series, as well as the duo's favorite film, Keanu. He knows how to bring a genuine cinematic characters to life into absurd situations. Um, in this particular movie, though, he seems to be studying from the book of Hangover Trilogy director Todd Phillips, shooting for slickness rather than slight gags, or maybe the screenplay simply didn't supply the raw materials to create those gags. Either way, the machine is surprisingly stylish as it is surprisingly unfunny. <laughs> the final give me a surprise is how the movie attempts to give Crash some of the therapeutic growth. Promised on an eventful hogwash revelation about a comedian serving as a de facto protector of the people. Expecting audiences to cheer with excitement as Crasher guzzles vodka, vodka and becomes an unstoppable fighting machine is bad enough. Hoping that they'll take away some valuable life lessons about balance and being yourself seem awful, an awful lot like denial. Seem an awful lot like denial. Okay, this is a really good point. I have to take a lot of this back. <laughs> I've got to lie. I started off hating this review, but this review makes a lot of good points about why people don't like Bert and why he's quite insufferable and hard to kind of take in large doses, especially this end bit. Because I felt like there's been a bit of promo I've seen of Bert where he's basically giving these like rallying speeches, almost these like Anthony Robbins type of rah rah motivational speech before the movie about this movie is about being you and coming into your power and all this sort of nonsense like hold on bro you're a lifelong alcoholic like this story is about you getting fucked up on a college trip and ending up 
entangled in the Russian mob. This isn't a really a story to kind of use as a, a kind of a motivational for people to go out there and get their passport stamped up. This is like a cautionary tale. This is like one of those, hey, I got away with this because I got away with this, but this is a cautionary tale. Make sure that you, you know, mind your P's and Q's in foreign countries type of stuff. But he's using it as a rah-rah speech. So I think these last few lines are really indicative of why people find it hard to kind of root for Bert because what you're rooting for isn't really a good thing. The last line, expecting audiences to cheer with excitement as Bert Kreischer guzzles vodka and becomes an unstoppable fighting machine is bad enough. Hoping that they'll take away some valuable life lessons about balance and being yourself seems an awful lot like denial. <laughs> and what's the one thing people say about Bert? That he's super, he's super in denial. So this is fucking a crazy thing to say. But I'm also not going to lie. Oh, it's out. Okay, cool. The machine's out in the U. Is out in the U. Okay, June second. I'm watching it tomorrow. Fuck it. I'm watching it tomorrow. I don't give a fuck. I'm watching it tomorrow. Let's actually, actually, I'm gonna, let's actually check for times. The machine. The machine. Let's see if they got available in London. Uh, view London. I'm actually gonna book a ticket and watch it tomorrow. Let's see if it's available. Yay! It's available tomorrow to watch. Okay, cool. So you're gonna get my review live and direct tomorrow when I go and watch it. Let's see. Let, let's see if it's available here. Let's see what tickets they've got available here to check it out on. No time showing. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, can I get any any cinema in London showing it, please? Let's see if we can just type London and see if it's showing in any. Or we have to type in a Pacific London place. Okay, cool. It's not letting me show it. Okay, let's go back then. Let's go. Uh, the machine, London viewings. This is not a good sign. Why can't I find any viewings for this? There'll be plenty of tickets available. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. We got Cineworld. Let's see what Cineworld is saying. Do Cineworld have any tickets available in any branch of London? Whoa. What are people saying about this movie? No tweets, no tickets. Okay, nothing going on there. No screenings about this at all? Zero? Nothing? No tickets? Showing in? Zero? Waiting poster? Showing in? Come on, showing in. Uh, should we want to no? Let's block that. We don't want to just allow our location. It's not showing anything. Okay, let's see if I type this in on the search bar. What's happening here? Is this like a conspiracy? Are they trying to cancel him? Is he the uncancelable one? Huh? Nothing. Look, the Cineworld, the machine. Come on, sir. Nothing's happening up here. Oh, oh, this isn't looking good. Okay, let's so see. Loading results. Okay, it's available now. Two films. Unlimited. Okay, it's cool. Limited screening. Released at 21st. So let's see this one. Let's see if this has got a viewing. Let's see if this works. I don't want to give them my look. Just, you don't have to do Just show me the fucking listings. Is it available anywhere? Nothing again. Okay, let's go back to Google. This is so bizarre. Viewings. Tickets. I don't know. Let's see if it comes up this way nothing <laughs> you'll indeed have a theater by yourself bring a date <laughs> my this is horrible but yeah it's not i can't find him what the fuck the tickets at nothing's available here london viewing okay let's take away tickets see london viewings sydney want to check that we love cinema no tickets here For, okay sorry okay cool let's see what we love cinema is saying here this is very very interesting why you can't find anything to buy tickets for this event Okay, cool. Let's get out of the way here. Anything here? Nothing. Show times. Availability. We handpicked. Okay, place. I don't want to show. I want to buy tickets. Let's see. Nothing on there. This is kind of wild, to be fair. I wonder what's happened. Maybe it got pulled altogether. <laughs> Maybe it got pulled. Honestly. The fact that he got this movie greenlit should be an accomplishment in itself, right? It's a movie based on a story that probably isn't true. Um, and it's a story that doesn't probably deserve a movie. Maybe a limited amount of series, like a four episode run, a little kind of 20 minute episode type of thing. That would have probably worked better. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm surprised. There's literally no screenings for it available that I can check out. Let's check out this one. London Net. Let's see London Net, Dakota, UK. Do they have any screens I can just check to see the tickets are available? I don't see anything here. Okay. 
It's showing from Friday the 2nd of June. But why can't I see? Okay, there we go. Finally, we got some information. So we got it available in Cineworlds and Odeons and also Genesis Cinema. But this is like, what, next week? When? What, what day is that? Okay, so there's nothing available for the 2nd. So what's available on the 1st of June? Uh, What's available on the 1st? Nothing here. So what's the day? It's Thursday, right? There's nothing available here for the f for today, the Thursday, because I'd watch it. I'd, I'd actually go watch it later today if it's available, but I can't see it. So let's just see if we can book a later time at one of these other cinemas. These are all so far away, though. Fucking hell. Let's see if the Genesis has anything. Genesis Cinema. They have it available. Okay, cool. Let's see Genesis Cinema. I have it available. This is pretty vile. I'm not going to je Genesis Cinema. <laughs> what's that Uche this movie flopped harder than Callan's eyelids <laughs> uh, honestly this hill I'm dying on with the machine is fucking wild because I'm going on like it's fucking godfather or some shit <laughs> I'm not letting this one die <laughs> but it's so clear no one gives a fucking fuck and these guys clearly aren't as famous as they think they are you know and I'm just not letting it go <laughs> I'm just holding on to it <laughs> <laughs> like it's something worthwhile to hold on to let's see if I can find it it's not available on there is it available can you see here the machine it's not even on the list Uh, nothing here can I read no can I search for movies here what's on oh, fucking hell brother what's on Uh, family film nope we don't want to see that by title can I just screen it can I look at it by title Okay, the a young boy. Okay, these are all are they in alphabetical order? No, they're not. Yo, can't I just search. What's what's with this fucking website? Why can't you just let me search for a web for a title? What is it by title by date? What is this? Okay, by date. How do you search by title? Okay, let's just let's just do by date. Let's just imagine we're gonna go today. What's available? Where is it? The first, right? Okay, the first. Super, is there? There's no machine here. Fucking hell, brother. Okay, so it's not, I, I don't know where it is. It's not available. It's not anywhere. I'm trying my best to look for it. It's not happening. So I guess maybe the internet has decided that Burt Crasher movie was a flop. Maybe. Maybe. But you, you you can look at it both ways, right? Both ways, as Brendan Shaw would say. Look at it both ways. <laughs> oh, mate. Um, what were people saying in the chat? AD says the fears are so far away. Yeah, they're too far, man. <laughs> there goes a ton of Segura movies. He lost all the weight for nothing. Oh, yeah, true. Bless him. Which is what Papa, the person we premiered. Nah, but, but, but Brendan definitely wasn't there. Um, he's at least catch the Martin, the matinee to get to the discount. Then he might be worth it. Okay, fair enough. The movie's not worth leaving your home for. Netflix, maybe. You know what's funny? That's probably going to happen. That should be hap that should happen sooner rather than later. To be fair, um, excuse me, Marty Moose, the machine sold six thousand, six, sorry six million and and three hundred so basically six point three million in the US, and only sold a hundred k outside of the US. So that figure of eight million that I got all together, maybe inflated, maybe not. But the fact that it's not breaking 10 and it costs 20 mil to make is painful. It only made 100k outside the US. Damn, son. Yeah, that that might be a, that might be a flop in it. I think that might be a flop. What do you think, guys? I think that might constitute as a flop. If you only make 100k internationally, that might constitute as a flop. Maybe. <laughs> Jesus Christ. To be fair, it's not surprising, isn't it? I think a lot of people were thinking that when he put the movie out in the first place. I don't think a lot of people had faith that he was going to do well. Um, I thought he would do well because, like I said, the climate of movies at the moment, people are making too many ideologically possessed movies and shit. I thought maybe a bit of comedic relief would be great. But then I also didn't factor in how unlikable and maybe un not non-famous but is, right? He's not the most famous guy in the world. And he's not the most likable guy in the world. So it made sense why some people kind of weren't really going to be big fans of the movie or root for it or come out for it. 
it made sense, you know? I should have maybe had that in mind. But again, you know, I, I always tell you, man, the random show is your home of fucking horrible hot takes. And if I can give you horrible hot takes, then I'm going to give you horrible hot takes. I'm not going to stop on that bad boy. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop, okay? Uh, you can't stop me. 